Hello, everyone. Welcome to Yachting International Radio. You're with Karine Rayson from the Crew Coach on the Wellbeing Project. Today, we're talking about resilience, a very important topic given the nature of our industry, where we are working 24-7 and obviously have to not only work together, but live together. Today, I have our expert on resilience. Gosh, Alison, you've got a plethora of skills. You are a business coach, you're a confidence coach as well, I read, and obviously specialize in building resilience. So thank you so much for joining us today. I can't wait to unpack resilience with you. If you don't mind sharing a little bit about yourself and your journey, because I know you're an athlete as well. So yeah, you've had a very diverse career. I have had a very diverse career and thank you very much for having me on, by the way. Mm -hmm. Uh, So look, I'm I'm, my training, I guess my professional training, I'm an occupational therapist trained. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of where, well, it probably all began before then, but that's my professional background of where I started, moved into coaching. I've also had a network marketing business, did that, did very well in that as well. Realized that was out of alignment with my values and goals, so left that rebuilt coaching again so you know many iterations written a book in there as well and then yeah I've been an athlete most of my life different sport not always the same sport but different sports and I think as an athlete and as a business person you you have to develop resilience there, there is no option because you're losing more than you're winning and to be able to go from loss to loss to loss is it's important because otherwise if we we get stuck you know and and the the who we are as an individual get lost in and very much as an occupational therapist as well from that background and that training you know you are the center of everything and how you feel and how you resonate and how you're going that emanates out into every area of your life and every piece of your life and you can't get you away from those things you go everywhere you go mm-hmm. so that's kind of I guess very quick snapshot of, of me and how and I'm a mom as well and I'm a wife so juggle all of all of the above Grace Allison so was there a point in your career where you had to overcome a particular mm-hmm. challenge which helped you build resilience Several, I think, really. Probably one during my one of my career iterations or changes, I got really sick. I burnt myself out and I got very unwell, very unwell. Uh, to the point, like, it, I didn't, didn't know if I was going to get out of bed the next day. It was pretty, pretty bad. So that taught me a lot about resilience and just the depths of capacity we actually have like we have far more capacity than 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 we think but when we choose to ignore warning signs and choose to just drive on no matter what without having any practices a place to look after ourselves as an individual it, the the resource it's not an it's not a you can't empty the cup out and expect to continue to pour from it which is kind of how i operated for a long time I thought well I, and I didn't speak about it I didn't have those resources I didn't really understand I just thought well if I keep driving forward and I'll, eventually I'll reach this goal and once I've reached the goal that'll be great because then I'll be able to you know have some more time then I'll be able to do this then I'll then I'll then I'll not realizing that all of that time frame of pushing everything out was so depleting that that I didn't have a structure to make sure that I was creating that within my life and within myself every day. I didn't, all of a sudden, I wasn't working on me. There was nothing where I was working on myself specifically. I was very busy building all of these things, but not necessarily taking care of me specifically as the individual. Mm -hmm. So I really, you know, I think it's easy when you're, working hard it's easy to lose trust in yourself like if you have a loss whatever well you know I I lost trust in myself because I got so sick Mm -hmm. rebuild that rebuild resilience is a lot about building trust in oneself one trust in one's decisions so 
had to rebuild that uh, up again to to know that I could trust myself. I know that I could trust my body, right? Because I got sick. I got so sick. I'm like, I don't know if I can trust my body. If I push that hard, am I going to break again? What? Where are the boundaries now? Where is this? It just seemed very cloudy and messy and basically had to put everything back together again in a new way that was that was more serving. So I, I could be more resilient. Yes. So you mentioned there that you didn't focus on self. So what does that look like and why is it important to focus on self? Because you are the center of your entire life, right? Everything emanates from you. Like we're energetic people, right? We're energetic beings, mindset and you, you go everywhere. So when we just drive, like I'm a very driven person, as I know you are also. So it's very easy to focus on the goal and the acquisition of the goal. And yes, 100%, you need the goal. You need to know what that is. You need to know where you're heading because otherwise we just literally go around in circles, right? A boat with no captain doesn't go in a very good direction, as yeah. I'm sure that everyone on this uh, who's listening understands that. So, you know, when when we deprive ourselves, when we don't look after ourselves, well, no one else is going to do that. Mm. No one else is going to do that for you. I mean, that would be nice, but no one else is actually going to do it for you. They cannot do it for you. You have to do that for yourself. That doesn't mean don't ask for help, mm. but that still has to come from you as the source point. Like that willingness to realize you even need help. So having self-care practices where you even check in, you know, like I was so driven at times, I wasn't checking in at all. I wasn't paying any attention whatsoever to how much sleep I was having. It was more a badge to, of honour to say, well, I've achieved all of this. In mind that I'd sacrificed my you know, sleep and everything else along the way, right? Mm-hmm. So sometimes I think too, somehow we see this as a badge of honour to be exhausted, to be to, to be, you know, well, I did it with all of this. Like, but, I, you know, it was, it was tough and I'm, you know, but I battled through. It's like, well, you, you also left all the people behind you and around you out of that equation. Mm-hmm. And they, you probably didn't need to get to that point. Yes. So for someone who is so busy, such as Yachty's, where it's really rare that you get time out for yourself, and what's very common as yachties, we feel like we lose our sense of, a sense of identity because we don't have that time. How can you carve out just a portion of your time or your day to make that time for yourself? You've mentioned their self-care strategies. So any simple activities that you can recommend doing for busy people? Yeah, 100%, right? Write out your goals. Have some. Write them out. Like focal points doesn't take, it can take one minute. Yeah. It's not, doesn't have it. Visualization, no one even knows you're doing it. Yes. Right? Like yeah. focusing on, you know, when you're away a lot, right? Like when you're away from your family, it's hard. It's really hard. But you can be visualizing the, what that will be like when you get back to like those little activities of self-care that might not seem like a big deal, but they make a big difference to your day. The other thing is breathing. How often do we not pay, even pay attention to that? And it's, it's hugely beneficial to breathe properly and to deep breathe because we can calm our nervous system down when you're on the go all the time, as you know, all of you are, That deep breathing, again, it's a practice that you can put in place. You know, like the simple four and four, breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for four. That act alone, even if you do that four times, that act alone of bringing your nervous system down, it's a very simple self-care practice. These things don't have to be difficult and they don't have to be a huge amount of time. And when you're super busy, you don't have that. Don't have that luxury when there's a lot of pressure on you. Don't have that luxury to go and take an hour out or whatever. You know, that would be nice, but it's also impractical in the environment. 
So adapting those and finding strategies that are practical within an impractical environment is also really important. So I think, you know, those sort of activities that are super simple that you can engage in at any moment, at any time, you know, you want to have that gamut of strategies in your back pocket so that you can pull on one, if not all of them at any one time. When something's getting really stressful, you can breathe. It's not, I think that's a self-care activity. Simple life is always better, quick and practical because most people are too busy to, in all reality, or don't then necessarily see the benefit, like the benefit versus the cost of stopping. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's okay. We all know that that's important. Mm -hmm. But whether or not one can bring oneself to do that, that's different. But it's if the strategy is really simple and quick, I find more people are more likely to do that. And then as you build the practice up, you realize the benefit. Then it's like, okay, well, maybe maybe I'll let myself do a little bit more of this or maybe I'll find a pocket of time here to do something or more than that. Yeah, and you're right. It's it's setting up simple rituals that are realistic and achievable to you. So a chief officer in my leadership course last night, he mentioned he journals and he practices meditation. He uses the Calm app, which I love, but I forget to use it because I'm not setting up my intention or rituals for the day. And he said the impact that it's had on him has been huge. The investment of only 10 minutes his ability to self-regulate his emotions and stay calm has been significant. It's been life-changing for him. So I yep. think you're right. 100%. And it, it can even be as simple as ensuring you drink enough water. Mm-hmm. Right? Like that's also another part of ins- ensuring resilience because when our body's toxic, we're not very resilient and we need water and it's really important like there's all, and that could be, you know, when we know, okay, I'm drink when I'm drinking water, I do my breathing. Yeah, generally, it's fantastic, right? So all these the rituals and the but the the setting up something that triggers it for you. Mm. When when I do this, I also do that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So the uh, you mentioned. In terms of, we're very lucky to have you as the guest expert. So when I say you mentioned, I know what the lineup for this coming Thursday is. And we're all so thrilled and excited. There's so much value there for the members. But I just want to touch on one point, and that is identifying your personal strengths and weaknesses and how that is related to resilience. Are you able to touch on that? Yeah, because I think the more you know you, the better you go in life. I also think that when you know strength and weaknesses is a really interesting topic because it's a double-edged sword because a lot of it's environmental. What is a strength in one area can be a weakness in another. Okay. It could be quite situational. So when you, but you, when you know where you lie in those you can work, one, on your weaknesses. You can work on that. But you can also amplify your strengths mm. and utilize those things to your benefit. Often we don't stop and look at, well, what am I good at? What am I not so good at? Where do I need to improve? Like, why is this situation continuing to occur? Is it that, you know, I have a weakness. It, it is my communi- are my communication skills not where they need to be, right? Like there is zero weakness there. Or out of my communication skills, because often it's communication, where do I, where, where, am, where am I really good at that? Okay, I'm really good at that in these situations. So that I think is a huge part of knowing oneself and how you operate and how you operate contextually as well, like in different environments under different situations. Like, it's super important. Oh, and I see that as self-leadership. And you're right, we don't do it often enough. I only did it later in my career when I was studying my business degree and it was part of our assignment. And now I carry carry this through my leadership course and my exit strategy course 
because a lot of us are sitting there scratching our heads thinking, well, what am I good at? Often in interviews, people ask, well, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And you tend to rattle things off that you think would be suitable for the interview. But do you truly understand yourself and your areas for, for growth, further development and your strengths and how you can optimize your strengths? So I think it's a very, very important point. So, Alison, in terms of what you are presenting in relation to resilience for our membership TCC tribe, what are the topics that you will be focusing on? So, look, really, how do you, how are you going to overcome the challenges? How are you going to set yourself up to win? Because it's a challenging environment that you all work in, right, in terms of of that. So look, for me, it'll be, we'll look at personal strengths and weaknesses, strategies, strategies on how to build a structure for yourself so that you can build your resilience. So what are the challenges? What does it look like? What's, what are your coping mechanisms? Thinking of looking at the topic of you know, how do you utilize a positive mindset or mindfulness? How do we utilize that to to get to overcome those challenges, to build that resilience? Basically, in short, how do you actually build resilience? Yes. Or yourself. So that, that, that's really the overall. Like, how are you going to build Amazing. your resilience in a challenging environment? That's so practical, so helpful. Thank you, Alison. So I know your business name is called Alison Wheeler and spelt W-H-E-E-L-E-R. And that's Alison Wheeler Coaching, isn't it? It sure is. Okay, fantastic. So you also mentioned that you were doing a podcast this morning. What resources, I don't know if that's for your community, if that's publicly available, but do you have any resources on offer that people could access? Yes, look, I, I have my I have a book. It's called Living from the Inside Out. People can get that on my website or on Amazon or Booktopia. It's on all of those. And it's very practical, very hands-on book. So people are more than welcome to jump on and grab that. And then I also, people can find me on Instagram. I have my link tree. They can book them for strategy sessions, all of those things. More than happy to people to reach out. The easiest place to find me is on my socials. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us, Alison, and can't wait to have you in our membership on Thursday. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm.